Hello everyone, my name is Hemingway Jones and I make videos about fountain pens for curious people. Welcome to the channel. Today's topic was suggested by a subscriber named Blush and Blue. Thank you very much for the inspiration, I really appreciate it. So today, we're going to compare two iconic fountain pens, try to come to some sort of a decision which one might be better and which one is a better value for you. So today, we're going to compare the Pilot Custom 823 with the mighty Mont Blanc 149. Let's take a look. Okay, let's begin by speaking about the general appearance or the aesthetics of these two pens. We'll start with the Mont Blanc 149. So it is a classic design, you can say that for it. I think it's also a valid argument to say it's a little tired. I mean, it's a basic black pen with some gold bands. Now it's certainly iconic for many people if you say fountain pen, this is the sort of image that would spring to mind. Nevertheless, it's not the prettiest pen. It's not going to dazzle anyone. It does have that Mont Blanc Glacier atop it, so it is very much marked as a Mont Blanc, which can be a detriment or a bonus depending on what you are trying to portray. Still, I can't give it huge points for aesthetics. It's certainly gorgeous. I think once we unscrew the cap is when it really shines, but in its basic form, it's kind of a generic black business oriented pen. So let's contrast that with the Pilot Custom 823. Ah, Pilot, how I love thee. The Pilot Custom 823 is this gorgeous translucent amber color. It shows off that incredible vac fill system mechanism inside and even capped, it is quite a gorgeous pen, though certainly not over the top. It is very much a pen that works seamlessly in academia or in business. It's absolutely brilliant, beautiful, also has gold bands, very lovely pen. So I think on the basic design, if I put these two side by side and compare, I have to give the aesthetics to the gorgeous Pilot Custom 823. Hmm. Before we unscrew the caps, let's speak a minute about the clips and compare them. Which clip is better? After all, you have to carry each of these pens around with you, so the clip is very important. Let's start with the Mont Blanc 149. So, it has a nice clip. It's very springy. It grabs onto your shirt or to the edge of your notebook pretty aggressively. I've never had it slide off. It has a nice flat edge and doesn't do much damage to anything. Some pen clips will leave that really deep indentation on paper and whatnot. I feel like the Mont Blanc strikes a nice balance. It's a pretty clip. It's not stylized beyond a simple shape, but it is reliable. The Pilot Custom 823 has a very interesting clip. It terminates into this very large globe of metal that clings to your shirt and to paper with alacrity. It certainly starts out rather stiff, but loosens up a bit over time. I wouldn't clip it to a precious document, but then I wouldn't do that anyway but it is something to consider. So I guess on use, I would give a point to Mont Blanc, but on aesthetics, I would give it to Pilot Custom 823. But if I had to choose between the two, I think I'm going to give this one to the Pilot Custom 823. I know some of you don't like that big globe of shiny metal there on the clip, but I do, I like how it slides in my shirt and carrying it is a breeze. So I'm giving another point to the Pilot Custom 823. Wow, the Mont Blanc's really behind here. Can it recover? I don't know, what do you guys think? 
By the way, I didn't script this. I'm doing this in real time. I thought that would be a lot more fun. So let's get back to it. Okay, now that we've unscrewed the caps on each of these, I want to write a letter of complaint, Kevin style, on the construction of both of these caps. I really don't like when caps have that bit of resin or plastic that's unprotected. I wish they would move the ring of metal down to the edge just to protect it. I am always worried about dropping one of these and in chipping them. I've seen so many vintage pens that have had big chips in them and I just don't want these to become like those. Another reason I'd like to take some points off for each of these is that they are both screw caps. I use them for business, maybe you use them for school. So if you're taking a lot of notes or you're signing your name quickly, that's a lot of screwing and unscrewing every day to get the nib out. It's a lot of work over the course of a day. And if you think that it doesn't matter and you don't think about it, I would ask you to reconsider that because the volume of times that I am using my pen during the day between journaling, between taking notes at work, between signing my name as I do probably 20 times a day on some sort of document at the office, it is a lot of effort getting in and out of a pen. So a snap cap is a lot more enjoyable. Nevertheless, both of these caps are very similar in that regard. They have about the same amount of threads. It's about the same experience. So this is a wash. Let's now speak about the fill mechanisms on each of these pens. They are very different, and I think it will come down to which one you prefer. So let's go through it. The Pilot Custom 823 has a vac fill system. Vac fill systems are a lot of fun to fill, and they are miserable to clean. Now, what compounds this is the fact that this one is a quasi demonstrator because you can see in there. So you're going to see every little drop of ink as you are flushing this to clean it. And that's going to be a bit of effort. It is fun. It holds a lot of ink. It seems to take me a long time for the Pilot Custom 823 to run dry. And that is definitely a bonus for those of you that are committed to your color of ink and are in no hurry to sample another ink or try it with that pen. So the vac fill system is a plunger. You simply immerse the nib in the ink, push the plunger down, creates a vacuum. The ink replaces the air. It's very dramatic and fun and quick, and you get a nice big fill. Then as you write with it, you have a little bit of ink that's in front of the stopper that you can write for a couple of pages or so. And then you need to loosen up the pen and you can see the plunger rising just a little bit. It's really fun and interesting, and that allows the big reservoir to fill into the feed and keep you writing for longer writing sessions. Now, some people might consider that a bit of a hassle because there's an extra screwing involved there or unscrewing, if you will, but it is sort of meditative and it's fun and it's interesting and it's part of that pen. And I love quirkiness of pens. So I personally don't mind it, but it's something to consider if you don't like your pens to be too fiddly. So let's contrast that with the Mont Blanc 149. It has a piston fill mechanism. You simply loosen it, put it into the ink and tighten it up and you have a very nice fill that you can write with for a pretty long time. Now for cleaning, you can't really see what kind of mess is in there. So in a way it keeps your OCD at bay. It does have a really interesting stylized ink level view window, but normally that looks clear whenever the ink is low but certainly during the cleaning process, it would look very clear. So in that way, it's a little bit psychologically easier to clean 
With the piston fill mechanism, it seems to take about three or four fills with water, flushing it out for it to run very, very clear. So it is much easier to clean. So I think on that basis, I am going to give the mighty Monty Blani a point. So Mont Blanc is on the board. Let's touch on ink capacity, shall we? So the Pilot Custom 823 holds around two and a half milliliters of ink. That's quite a bit of ink. The Mont Blanc 149 holds about 2.1. So if you prefer a lot of ink in your pen, you have to give this one to the Pilot Custom 823. However, if you're like me, you kind of want to change your inks regularly. You don't want to feel like weeks have gone by and you still have the same ink in your pen. I get that feeling quite often. I just want to change it and I just don't run out. So I'm sort of on the fence with this, but I would have to say that I prefer changing inks more often and I like a good solid ink capacity, but I don't like a huge ink capacity. I start to get bored. So this may be weird and controversial, but I'm going to give this one to the Mont Blanc. So now let's unscrew the caps and compare these nibs first aesthetically and then we'll get into size and performance. So side by side, you look at these nibs, they're both gorgeous. The Mont Blanc 149 has an 18 karat gold nib and the Pilot Custom 823 has a 14 karat gold nib. Now for my preference between 18 and 14, I am totally out of that game. I really don't mind. As far as gold is concerned, you can do a lot with it in regards to flexibility and all that, but these are both fairly stiff pens. They're not pens that I exert any pressure with while I write. I find them both to be very similar in their feel, and if that extra four carats makes a difference, I don't feel it. Now, aesthetically, the two-tone nib on the Mont Blanc 149 is absolutely gorgeous. I love the designation in meters for Mont Blanc, the mountain, which is pretty fun as well. The Pilot nib is no sloucher either. It is a nice, solid, pretty, gorgeous design. However, the Mont Blanc certainly wins this one on aesthetics. And if you consider size as part of that, the Mont Blanc has that giant number nine nib, which is very impressive in its size, but it's not so large that it makes writing with it awkward in any way. The nib on the Pilot Custom 823 is smaller, but it's elegant and perfectly matched with the size of the pen. It is a perfectly beautiful and functional nib. Now let's get into the performance of each of these. Well, now Monty Blani has pulled away now that it won the nib aesthetic race. Boy, what is going to happen? Well, let's talk about now the writing experience and I'm wrapping this in with how the nibs actually work once applied to the page. Now, this is definitely a battle of gradations. So the Pilot Custom 823 has one of the most sublime and smoothest nibs that still somehow through some sort of alchemic process delivers some measure of feedback back to my hand. It's so fun to write with, it's so precise that my criticisms stray into this area that it's almost too fast, too quick, too precise, too flawless that my hand moves a little bit faster for myself almost as if I'm driving a car with a bigger engine than I'm usually used to driving with. It just feels almost overpowering. But in a way, that is absolutely amazing because anything you ask this pen to do, it does. It certainly never has a false start. The feed never runs out of ink. It is just a competent writer in glorious smoothness, incredible precision. I just find that my handwriting tends 
to suffer a little bit by its quickness, its smoothness, its incredible alacrity on the page. Also, I have this pen in a medium, yet it feels a bit on the fine side, which is often what you expect from nibs that are produced in Japan. So keep that into consideration. In contrast, my beloved Monty Blani 149 has one of my favorite nibs. It's not a flexible nib. It's not a nib that I exert any pressure on. It writes with the faintest space between it and the page. Line variation is then a function of playing in between that space and total nothingness. You can get some nice light to darker lines. It is a very intuitive writer. It is smooth to an extreme. Once again, the feed is very luscious. I've never been wanting for ink flow. I've never had a false start with this pen and I've owned it for well over a decade. So it is an absolute brilliant writer, brilliant writing experience with an incredible nib that once it's married with some nice paper is just absolutely exquisite. So I hate to say this, although once again, this is gradations. They're both fantastic, but I have to give this to the Mont Blanc 149. Well, the Mont Blanc 149 is now well ahead of the Pilot Custom 823. Is this struggle over? I would say not. We are now getting into one of the most important distinctions between these two pens, and that is the value proposition. So you have the Pilot Custom 823, an almost perfect pen. It's elegant. It feels amazing in the hand. It writes exquisitely. If anything, it's almost too good. It's hard to rein it in. So you get all of this for around 320 US dollars. That is an extraordinary value for any pen. I've said it before, and I'm sure you guys are going to hear me say it again. If you own the Pilot Custom 823, you certainly can buy another pen, but you don't have to. It's just that good. Now let's contrast that with the Mont Blanc 149, one of the most classic fountain pens ever. A fountain pen that traces its history back since the early 1950s that is just a classic and absolutely exquisite writer with a very sensitive nib that you can craft beautiful paragraphs and write with and just have a very satisfying experience with this brilliant pen. However, it costs almost a thousand US dollars. They are available secondhand for around $500, so keep that in mind. But nevertheless, as a brand new pen, we're talking a thousand bucks. So if we're doing a side-by-side -side value proposition between these two pens, and you have the Pilot Custom 823 for $320, you have the Mont Blanc 149 at a thousand dollars, and there's a difference between them and we're relating them, head on, it's not worth the extra money, folks. The Pilot Custom 823 is extraordinary. The Mont Blanc 149 is its own thing and $1,000 is the price of entry for that. If you want that experience, that's what you need to pay or to pick it up secondhand. However, side by side, the Pilot Custom 823 is exquisite. It's a great pen once you have it. You really don't need the Mont Blanc 149. I would put it out of your mind and move on to something else. The Pilot Custom 823 makes a fantastic ceiling for fountain pens. You really don't need anything over it. You can certainly choose to. I have, many people have, but 823 is where it's at. 
So to wrap up, let's touch on a, another thing. The Mont Blanc 149 is a much thicker pen. So make sure you like thick pens if you're going to go that way. The Pilot Custom 823 is more elegant and even with the vac filling system, it doesn't have the big bulge like you normally find in something like the Twisby Vac 700R. So it's awfully nice how refined the A23 is. In fact, in size, it's somewhat similar to a Mont Blanc 146, which is thinner and more elegant. And the nibs are more comparable as well. So if you like a thinner pen, then put that into the mix as well. So the Mont Blanc might score on more points than the Pilot Custom 823, but if I'm going to be honest with you all, as I have been this year and a half since I started the channel, that Pilot Custom 823 is an exquisite pen. I think we all get a bit carried away at times over certain grail pens. You really don't need that Mont Blanc 149, but if you find yourself pining for it, I know the feeling, I mean, I own it. I own a lot of other pens too, so I understand. So I'm right there with you. Well, on that giant bombshell, it's time to end. What do you think of the Pilot Custom A23? What do you think of the Mont Blanc 149? And how do you think they compare? Which one would you choose? Is it worth an extra $700? That's something to really think about. So thank you very much for watching this video. And if you've watched this far, I think you like my channel at least enough to subscribe. I would love to have you following along on this journey with us. So please hit that button. Also, membership is available. If you'd like to get behind the scenes and see all the bloopers that I created in making this video and some others, then hit me up for membership. I'd love to have you as part of the producers of this channel. So I release new videos each Friday and I have a live show every Tuesday night at eight Eastern time. So I promise we will see each other again very soon, further up the road. So take care. Mm -hmm.